We heading out. We're gonna enjoy nightlife on Montreal. The nightlife in Montreal, with DJ events and ravaged dance floors, this city has a long-standing reputation for being a party town most days of the week. Due to its legal and drinking age of 18, the prevalence of inner-city university campuses and its bars closing at three in the morning. You know, we uh, bars close at three. Oh, really? Around 11 o'clock, all of the nightclubs were starting to open up, uh, so the lines were long, people were anxious to get in there. Honestly, I love just the nightlife I'm in Montreal. Just walking on St. Laurent and like seeing all the drunk people. Somebody called me hot there the other day, and that was a really good Okay. Just walking along Montreal is pretty cool. You look ahead, you see people dancing in the streets, literally. This is so much more lively than Vancouver. Not even Toronto, just unmasked. Literally, people are living their best life out here in these Montreal streets. And this is a Monday night, oh my god. People are out like it's a Saturday night. That's wild. Next up on our list, this one excites people all the time. It's beer in corner stores. It's just more accessible. There's less red tape to do many of the things that you want to do. Toronto has stricter laws on drinking alcohol. The drinking age is 19 in Toronto and just 18 in Montreal. Everything here is 18, so I'm going into a liquor store to buy alcohol because I can. Yeah, I'm just going to buy this alcohol because I'm no. over 18. Le Dépanneur is a very Québécois thing. These are on every corner. It's basically the Québécois equivalent of a bodega. The Dep. The Dep, the Dépanneur. It's the corner store. So a Dep Dépanneur in Montreal. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, you say, oh, I'm going to the Dep. We're about to go in there and see if we can get some wine. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> What's the plan for tonight? Uh, drink. He's from one day. Oh, okay. no. Nice to meet you. We're in Montreal to have a good time, to meet some great people, and just vibe out, you know? We need to get out and get drunk, boy. All this weather. time. Connect New England with Canada by train. Today, officials from both countries are going to meet to see if they can make this happen. The possibility of an overnight train from Montreal to Boston. Wow. In my senior year in high school, we took a bus up to Montreal. All the seniors, this would have been way more fun to take a train. <laughs> Montreal is an awesome city. It would be great to have that access to. Yeah, it's it. really fun, especially if you're a high school senior. It's really fun. <laughs> The name Montreal, someone once said, is like a happy shout of wonderment. You're downtown on St. Catherine Street on a balmy summer night. You're a prairie farmer or a New Yorker on a visit, and it surprises you to discover that Montreal is the largest French-speaking city next to Paris. During Prohibition in the States, a lot of jazz musicians, burlesque performers, flocked up to Montreal. Montreal was where all the booze was flowing. We were the city that never slapped. We were Sin City. If you imagine the Montreal nightlife is a bit like Las Vegas today and that St. Catherine is a strip. I was raised in swinging Montreal oh, where? of the 30s and 40s. Beautiful Montreal. Back then, a whirlwind of vice, corruption and debauchery. I loved every minute of it. When in Montreal, you must visit their speakeasies or pubs as their nightlife is pretty lit. There's so many bars and cafes. Speakeasies are so cool here. Go to some healthy bars. America or North America, um, a speakeasy is basically like a secret hidden bar that was around during Prohibition because people couldn't buy alcohol so they would go to these secret underground establishments and order fancy cocktails. Both the US and Canada went through periods of what were called temperance movements that led to political pressure to outright ban alcohol on local, provincial, and even the national level. In Ontario, alcohol was illegal in the province from 1916 to 1927. The U.S. had it from 1920 to 1933. Lorsque les hommes reviennent massivement de la Première Guerre mondiale, le gouvernement est sous énormément de pression dans l'opinion publique pour faire quelque chose. Ainsi, le gouvernement convoque les Québécois le 10 avril 1919 à aller voter dans un grand référendum. Oui contre non. Êtes-vous d'opinion que la vente des bières, cidres et vins légers devrait être permise. Et cette fois, le oui l'emporte massivement. 78,6% des Québécois veulent continuer à boire. On devient le seul endroit en Amérique du Nord où il est possible de boire légalement, juste à côté des États-Unis. Montréal devient une destination inévitable pour faire la fête, un endroit où convergent les plus grandes vedettes d'Hollywood, mais aussi les plus grands criminels de l'époque. 
Montréal devient la Paris du Nord. Montréal was quickly becoming one of the most important cities in all of North America. Rain leaves Montreal on track 42 all aboard. Speak easy, speak easy. I'm leaving town, I'm going right away. Everything up there's okay. We'll be leaving in the summer and we won't come back till fall. Goodbye, Broadway, hello, Montreal. Best of Montreal all out. Tout le long de la frontière entre le Québec et les États-Unis, des petites parois se mettent à vendre de l'alcool de contrebande aux Américains. Rapidement, la province devient la plaque tournante du bootlegging mondial et cumule une richesse ahurissante. Plusieurs entreprises ont amassé de belles fortunes, dont la compagnie Seagram, une entreprise fondée par la célèbre famille Brofman. Ça va aider plusieurs brasseurs, dont Lapat, Molson et Sleeman, entre autres, à continuer de brasser des affaires. Ça fait partie de notre histoire et on devrait la connaître. Donc la prochaine fois que vous vous demandez pourquoi nous sommes parmi les seuls en Amérique à permettre la gold dès 18 ans, eh bien souvenez-vous simplement que nous avons un passé un peu particulier. It's too easy to walk into a bar and sit down and order a drink. People want to maybe put a little bit of work in. And I think the speakeasy is something that people are attracted to for that particular type of experience. We highly recommend this clandestino bar located behind a discreet door with graffiti. It had a low-lit garden vibe with creative drinks and beautiful decor. I don't recall exactly how I heard about this place, but it has to be the coolest restaurant I've ever been to. The hipsters truly outdid themselves this time. They repurposed an old flower shop and not changed anything about the exterior, but on the inside there's this super trendy cocktail bar and restaurant with a modern take on Japanese cuisine. And if this place couldn't get any cooler, if you go down to the basement, there's a speakeasy with a DJ and a whole different menu of cocktails. We decided to visit another speakeasy. Quand on ouvre la porte de cette agence de détective, on se retrouve face à un mur. Il suffit d'appuyer sur la bonne brique et la véritable entrée se dévoile. Oh my god, are we too short? Is he gonna like laugh at us? <laughs> okay, look left. Quand les gens recherchent un petit peu la porte, il y a déjà comme une appréhension, ils sont en train de découvrir quelque chose de nouveau, le petit côté de où on cherche la brique pour ouvrir la porte et pour rentrer, donc déjà il y a une pré-expérience. Avis de recherche placardé au mur, lumière tamisée, musique jazzy, tous ces détails donnent l'impression d'être dans un film noir. D'ailleurs, pour aller au bout de l'immersion, on vous propose même de résoudre une enquête criminelle. Before Mira was a different vibe, as you can tell, but this one was our favorite. It involved getting an invitation through an email on their website showing that bouncer, finding that special brick to enter, and this menu. It was a crime mystery involving suspects on each page and hints included in various drinks in order to solve the mystery. Maison Cloak Crew. Taylor. Bar. You go through a secret door down a dimly lit corridor that brings you through to a bar. The cloakroom bar is uh, located inside this old grey stone building. So you walk into the lobby, you have a tailor shop on your right, and you have a hidden door in front of you, which is covered by a mirror. You open that door, you make your way into the cloakroom bar. A friend of mine had a tailor shop. We used to come and hang out, and uh, we really felt that creating a, a cocktail bar would be a great fit and a great match. There's no menu. You just describe the flavors that you like, and they make the drink for you there and then. Our cocktails are handcrafted. Our ice is made in-house and then hand-cut. Our syrups are made in-house. We've had the cool hipster, the lawyer, the doctor, the artist, the cocktail aficionado. It feels like a Montreal place to me because there's this theme of subtlety. We are trying to find this secret speakeasy. Now we are walking to a bar that was recommended by one of my viewers, Jennifer, on Instagram. Thanks, Jennifer. This place called The Cold Room that is a speakeasy. Me and my dad, we're going to a speakeasy. I've never been to a speakeasy, have you? Never. It's gonna be fun. It's supposed to be, you know, like really hidden. There's no signs or anything, so hopefully we can find it. 
First of all, you spend about 15, 20 minutes on your phone looking around trying to find the black door with the doorbell. Fun fact, they're all black doors, and so good luck. It's an experience that we tailor specifically for that crowd. We get a select few people that actually go and search out the place, so they're putting work in. All right, we're pretty sure it's somewhere on this corner, but we've walked a few times. That's not it, it's a sunglass door. We know it's a black door. Ooh, could it be this one? Should we try? All right. Nope. No, I don't want to give up. My dad said he wants to give up. I want to find it. It's here on St. Vincent. Yeah. Could it be that one? Oh, hey. We couldn't find it. <laughs> one of my dad's friends had to come out and help us because we literally could not find it. So this is the speakeasy. You ring this doorbell. <laughs> Kyle already pushed it. It says patience. Oh. <laughs> When you ring the doorbell, you wait, and then our host will come upstairs and greet you as if you are being welcomed into our home. So we made it in. It's called the cloak room. Cold room. Sorry. We're in the cold room, and it is down these stairs. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, wow. This is legit underground. Oh, my gosh. Speak easy in Montreal. Awesome. This is so cool. Oh my gosh, we're so far underground in the basement. Shout out to Jennifer for recommending this. This is amazing. We made it in. Hey, this is a good find. So this hidden gem is called Cold Room. And it's a speakeasy, like literally. Because when you try to find the entrance, you can't. Because it's so discreet. Very good drinks, by the way. I don't know what this is, because I'm not very good at France. It's so dark in here, so sorry about the lighting, but she is. Yup, yup, drink it. There he goes. Alright, so this place is so cool. I just ordered a drink. It's called the Pink Flamingo. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Cheers. 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 <laughs> They're playing Queen. I'm drinking a rum fruity drink in a secret bar underground in Montreal. I am living my best life right now. We kind of joke saying that we're the worst kept secret in Montreal and that's a blessing and a curse. It's great to know that people know where we are, but we do miss having a little bit more of that sort of secrecy behind it. But it's a great problem to have, can't really complain. And out the door we go, goodbye coolest bar I've ever been to and probably ever will be to. Yeah. Well that was so cool. That was like the coolest thing ever. I'm so glad we did that. After ordering our second yummy cocktail, time to head back and along the way, just enjoyed how clean and tranquil the streets are here. Hi, okay, so this is me post-Montreal trip. I, I've recovered fully. This has been one of my uh, favorite cities to visit, period, and I absolutely look forward to the next time I get to come back here. It's just a fun, fun city. Everything you've heard about uh, this being a fun city, it's true. Montreal has officially charmed its way into my heart. Its elegant yet sincere character is something you just want to experience again and again. The roller coaster is making its last run, and the wheels of fun are slowing to a stop. Over quiet roads where once two empires fought, carefree Montrealers are going home. Tomorrow has already begun. The morning editions are going to press. Bonsoir, Montreal. A bientôt.